Look in the streets of Brazil. Look at the great patriots in Brazil that had a lot of danger to themselves have come forward in the streets of Brazil. And quite frankly, as much as I love the Bolsonaros, and Eduardo, I think, is going to speak tomorrow, and there's no better man on this globe than Eduardo Bolsonaro or his father. In Brazil, it's gone beyond the Bolsonaros. This is the people saying, no, you didn't follow the Constitution. You use these machines, you use the judiciary to shut us down in the media, and we're not going to tolerate it. It's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. Same in the United States. You know, the people like Kerry Lake are not going to give up. And I use as a warning in the great fight that you guys have in front of you, both for the cultural issues, for the political issues and the economic issues. Once they start taking and digitizing the, the elections, once they start going to machines where you can't get paper ballot, you don't have proof of ID, you take it away from the precincts and they start to centralize it in collection centers. That's all done for one reason. That's to consistently steal elections because they know they don't have the backing of the people. Our institutions are complicit. Inaction and inertia is complicity. And there is no way that this kind of violent attempted coup followed by the slow rolling coup uh, that we're seeing, you know, continue this week and last week with the uh, long uh, attempts to, you know, get a, a speaker for the GOP. We'll go over that in tomorrow's show. You need controlled opposition in order for that to happen. You need to have the other side neutered or corrupt or complicit. I think it varies on who you're talking about. And that is what we have. And now we are importing it out of Florida. And if I was a Brazilian, I would be so furious with the US government right now. The same way that we in the United States uh, were furious at the Russian government, the Israeli government, the Saudi government, all the governments uh, that have been interfering with our political system, uh, with our our elections with our sovereignty, uh, you know, we would have liked if those oligarchs and dirty plutocrats um, and bad actors had been held accountable in their own countries so that they could not go on to hurt ours. And what the United States has done, what the Biden administration has done, is to refuse to indict Steve Bannon, uh, refuse to enact any kind of consequences for his behavior, thus allowing him and his backers, which includes other coup uh, participants, by the way, like Ali Alexander, to go to Brazil and try to destroy their democracy. If I were Lula, if I were the Brazilian government, if I were a Brazilian citizen, I would be demanding meetings with our government right now because I would see it as state-supported terrorism that has been unleashed in Brazil, of course, you know, in partnership with their own domestic seditionists, terrorists, insurrectionists, and so forth. But, you know, the U.S. government, the DOJ, multiple courts could have put a stop to this a long time ago, and they could put a stop to it now, and they don't want to. They don't want to change personnel. Biden won't even fire Christopher Wray, for example, the FBI head, for looking on as this happened. He won't fire Merrick Garland and, you know, of course, appointed Merrick Garland because Garland was a protege of, uh, you know, a deeply corrupt friend of Biden's, uh, Jamie Gurelik, who worked in the Clinton administration and then went on to, you know, I mean, we've gotten into her record a lot of times, but the key thing to remember here is she's Jared and Ivanka's lawyer. Uh, we keep emphasizing this is transnational organized crime crime because the fortunes of all these various leaders are connected. And in Jared's case, it's a connection to Netanyahu, um, you know, for Trump and uh, tropical Trump um, Bolsonaro, you know, they want their fortunes to rise and fall together because a lot of the, um, you know, behaviors and goals they have are interdependent, things that have to do with fossil fuels, things that have to do with big industries and corporations. You know, one of the few pieces of good news in the last couple of years was that Lula won. And that meant that the Brazilian rainforest had a, a good shot of being protected. And I was so grateful when I heard that news, um, you know, that the destruction would not continue unabated. I was so happy to tell my children this, to tell them that there was something finally uh, hopeful going on, you know, led by an actual president of a country, that, that fortunes were changing for the better. And then what goes on to, you know, 
potentially destroy all of that progress. Like our government's refusal to hold criminal elites like Bannon accountable. It's so disgusting. Uh, I, I can't imagine what other countries think. I mean, I guess I can. I see it on Twitter, just the kind of a mix of shock and anger and resignation. Um, and I'll say, you know, as an American citizen, uh, I share that with you. I, I share that as well. George Orwell, when he was anticipating for years the Germans to invade the United Kingdom, he was preparing for under German occupation that the police would do what the police tend to do and side with the fascists. And so he expected the the police across the UK to basically serve as an arm of the Nazi Gestapo. As we say, you know, all those police violence videos that drove the Black Lives Matter movement, those were recruiting tools, just like they're recruiting tools in Russia, right? All the sadists see that and they they block to those jobs and so on. They're, those types of sociopaths are very useful to dictators and aspiring dictators. Same with our FBI, FBI being just glamorized cops. There's There was enough sympathy across the FBI that January 6th was allowed to happen. Just like there's enough sympathy, as we see on video, with the police forces in Brazil for that violent insurrection to happen. And, and don't expect anyone to do anything about it. I ran into a Pulitzer Prize winning financial journalist the other day, who I know, and he covered the big economic crash of 2008 and wh like why the SEC allowed that to happen and why no one was arrested, no one was held accountable. All of these tragedies, of course, are, are play out in Adam McKay's great film, The Big Short. And I asked him, I said, well, well, where do you see the parallels with the DOJ and how they're handling all the financial crimes and the insurrection and so on with Trump? And his whole, you know, ring of corruption. And this, again, financial uh, reporter said to me, he's like, the DOJ is totally incompetent. They don't have the competency to do this. They absolutely do not. So don't expect anything from the DOJ. And any resistance Twitter account that tells you that you're not smart enough to understand the DOJ and justice is coming and Jack Smith is sexy. Anybody who wants to build up that mythology, do not trust them. Do not listen to them. Okay. Believe your eyes, believe your ears. There are formal federal prosecutors like Eli Honig at CNN and others who have been screaming to the high heavens saying like, for the love of God, DOJ, do something. There was a letter, I think signed by like a, something like a thousand, at least several hundred former federal prosecutors to the GOJ saying justice needs to be served. So enough pressure has been put on them, right? They won't do anything. Don't expect anything from them. The reason why Gaslit Nation held seven get out the vote events during the midterms, when I was adjusting to life as a mom of two kids, I had no time to do seven get out the vote events. But we did because in our pretty weak coalition of resistance here in America, the DOJ is the weakest link. And it, it, and it puts greater pressure on we, the people, to stand up and fight, even when we don't have the time to do it, even when we don't have the bandwidth to do it. So the fact that over the years, Catholic Nation keeps doing greater and greater number of get out the vote events shows you what dead weight our law enforcement are to protect us, to protect our very democracy. And that incompetence, that corruption and so on is spreading around the world. Mm -hmm.